All right, so this is episode one. We're here. We're ready to start. Xenox Technocracy. Naraza Prime. Naraza Prime. I'm going to pronounce the names however I want to, and if I pronounce the name in a way that doesn't match the spelling, I'm going to seriously consider immediately changing the name to how I pronounced it. But I may not, because that's a lot of work. Okay, so I did a whole episode that was just talking about how I was going to play the game. That episode is optional, you don't have to watch it, you may find it boring, there's no gameplay in it, and there's a lot of screen clicking in it, and a lot of weird noises on the text screen, because I make mistakes by dragging the screen with stuff to click on. But it does explain how my philosophy and plan for playing them, the, the Xenox, which are my favorite race, with the humans being a very close second and the, uh, the blue fish people, who for right now I can't seem to remember their name, uh, being a slightly distant third because even though I think they're superior as a technocracy, I just like the other things that, that our little cats do. Um, that sort of like fills out the, the the fantasy for me better than the fish people do. Even though I like the fish people because they still do all the things I like except for the spine, which I also like. Here we go. So we're on a, yeah, obviously we're on a rocky tundra moon. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was looking for anything specific or special that it calls out here, but no, there's nothing. I'm just going to wait for a few seconds. It was a nice smooth pull-in, which is nice. Usually I get smooth pull-ins, like zoom-ins, when I've had the game loaded for a bit before I start playing. And I get janky ones when I try to rush right into the game. It's just the thing I've noticed. We like the past. We like ruins. We've been stuck here for a while because the galaxy got shattered. Uh, we lost our technology. We've been trying to rebuild. Things are getting better. We found our way back to this. We're finding our ways back to the stars. We're a shadow of what we used to be. We need to rediscover everything we've lost. We have found technology that has advanced our early field Exper uh, warp field experiments and our research labs. That's normal. We're getting Colony Development 5, high-tech research, that's helpful, um, of 5, and plus 8 scenery. Great. Dismiss. Very first thing we do is we go and we get this and we crash it. And then we get this. And then we leave the screen. And then we pause. And then we go into our ship designs and we immediately delete the escort because there will never be a single escort built unless things go so bad that I'm panicking trying to survive. Um, oh no. I deleted the escort without turning it off automatic, so now it's going to come back. That's fine. Small spaceport manual. Research station manual. Exploration skip ship manual. And construction ship manual. We want to always be doing all of those. That being said, the only one we need to look at right now is we need to immediately look here. Well, actually, we'll probably look at all of them. You want, you'd have a proximity scanner. Just we have. We want a bunch of medium particle beams. Too bad we can't have as many as we want. Uh, maybe we take off a shield. No, the shield is fine. We look up here. I don't think there's much we can take off, so... Mm. 
They have not done the usual trick of giving us an unnecessary second fuel cell. I might be trapped then. I might have to take off my, um, my sensors. We'd only put two of these on because we need them, right? Yeah. Hmm. That's a thing. I guess we do this. Right? Maybe we do one secret missile. Maybe we do two secret missiles. Maybe we put a secret missile here as well. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Then we change this to tiny spaceport. We want, I, I haven't been playing this enough yet to have the strong focus I usually have in games like this on naming things creatively. I am still trying to learn systems, and while I'm trying to learn systems, I'm just going to use names that tell me exactly what the thing is so that I can quickly find things when I'm in the menus. So this is our research lab. I am tempted to remove the weapons, but I don't think that's the right decision. So I want to put it seeking missiles there and there. And then I want the particle beams on the tails because they have the best arc. The particle beams will shoot across on both sides, so they'll be able to hit basically everywhere. There's a few spots, like right on the end here, this particle beam won't be able to support. And right on the end here, this particle beam won't be able to support. But mostly, things will be coming at the side of these things, as from my experience. So there's that. We do not need two fuel cells. Extra fuel cell on a base is useless. And we will replace the fuel cell with a proximity sensor, which we can't do because it's too much space. Hmm. Anything else where there's a pro? Oh no, it's too much crew. Hmm. That is actually too bad. I could probably actually put a crew system on interestingly it doesn't have a command center that's fine the crew system is fine i don't think there's anything else that we would put on here at least not right now no reason to have an extra docking bay on this station. It hardly needs a docking bay at all. It's only for ships coming in and out for for interactions, but sake, not for actual like services that it provides. So then we do we let them do the mining stations. We don't care about that. We want to change this to we'll keep it Pathfinder because I'll remember what that means easily enough okay so things we don't need this is good because of the um the maintenance savings but i almost always immediately remove it if i don't need the crew also take the gun off i think that gives us room for a fuel cell which will get removed for a warp drive later in fact, it'll get removed for a warp drive, and another one will get removed for a basic reactor. But here's the basic ship. This ship... This is my basic design. Extra fuel cell. No command center. Command centers can come back later. Probably won't, though. Uh, and then we go to our space dock, which is actually a fabrication ship. call it a fabricator and here we do the same thing if we have room to take it off from crew we do don't need it 
Um, we then take off the missiles because it needs to run and it needs to never think that shooting will ever help. It's just basically shooting will never help you. Having weapons is not a good idea when shooting will never help you. Could even put another one on, I think. Nope, nope, nope. Seems like my fingers believe that we definitely need a bunch of command centers. So there we go. So there's our first ship edits done. Then we immediately want to go in here and just build the tiny spaceport right away. And then we want to grab our first guy here. Hello, Swift Treasure. It's nice to meet you. You are going to be, for much of the game, the ship that I control. Because I like to have one of these guys I control, just one, so that I can select perfect things. My preferred speed to play this game is on is times two. I prefer not to go up to time four, just because it's a bad habit. Uh, times four is too fast later in the game when lots of things are happening at once. Things will get spammed at you. I find that green messages that are actually things I wanted to see will fly off the screen and terrible things happen. Times one is fine, but far too often the problem with times one is that nothing ever seems to happen. So the amount of time this takes in my experience is such that there is that it is good to send these first two ships out to do their job as they come up. By the time this is scanned and the construction ship has reached there and begun to build whichever one comes up first, the mining, well, most likely the construction ship won't be built until after we have both the mining and research base there because we're playing on normal. There will always be a mining and research base on the moon right beside you. I don't know how that it is for a, a normal planet start say system start by the way i don't know how much that is for the harsh system start probably frequently isn't there i can't imagine any other reason to call it harsh other than that kind of stuff and so let's uh let's take a second to look at whether or not we're doomed so here is our system it is like almost all starting systems dense with planets we have one 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 we have one other ice planet in our system which means we will probably not have the second place to settle not that that should be an expectation we have a swappy marsh plant that might be good if we later get somebody other race that's good we have an ocean planet which will be bet good if we get something later too our ruins are here and here, which is what we will use our personal ship for. Now let's look out and see how bad our start is. Okay, our start is tolerable. This is not bad. I'm guessing our first circle will reach this star, this star, this star, this star, and one of either this star or this star. It's hard to tell for sure. It's really interesting, usually there's fuel on that moon but not always but usually there is there will be fuel someplace in your starting system when you're playing on normal um yeah there's planets for us to s for our first warp drive to explore which means we will probably be fine industrial research is okay which is all okay We don't need to operate the um no you don't want to refuel you want to survey it the construction ship will go out and do its job on its own we don't need to we don't need to specifically select it and tell it what to do so yeah this is time to wait. I like the pace of this early part of the game on times two. This is a game where I really like to just sit back and relax into it. 
We're still a long way before anything bad happens. It's not going to be pirates or story events for a little while yet. The first story event isn't going to happen until I have my first warp drive. These two guys are going to pass each other. It's going to seem super close for our perspective, but it's really not going to be close at all. It's not much you can really do during this part. Just wait. I suppose it would be okay to times four for a short time. Until our first retrofits are done, at least. Well, at least until the technology ticks. Just relax. There we go. No point in... Oh, right. No, this is one of the few points in the game where it is worthwhile to do one technology retrofits, right? Right. So now, have you lost balance? No, of course not. You haven't got your thing on yet. Skip drive. Another reactor. That's going to push us over, which sucks. The only thing that we can take off is a fuel cell. Sucks, but that happens like literally every time. Almost to the point where there's no point in re fitting the first guy, but really the only reason we refit the first guy is to get rid of that gun. I like to put them where, I, where I'd like them to be as well, because it, it, like, it, it comes down naturally that way, if you know what I mean. Like, I'm removing things that I would prefer to be there to replace them with things I need instead of, you know, the opposite. Put on another reactor, and we should be able to remove. Oh, that sucks. Well, you don't get proximity sensors, buddy. Sorry. Sorry. Two shields worth way more to you than proximity sensors. And that's it. The the civilians will do their own ships. We should be able to immediately go to this guy and. Retrofit him. So that's that's great. So let's look at our our colony here, so we can get a good idea of what's being built. So we're building a light trader and an ore hauler. Nice. What we want to do is immediately make a build order, which is here and then here. We want to build to three exploration ships and three construction ships. Great. And we want to wait till the retrofit is done. Probably can go back to times four for a bit while waiting for that. Go back to times two. And then we look and we say, what do we want to do? The first priorities are the places with ruins and the frozen planets. So I want you to start here. Just prioritizing the actual points of interest with one ship is a good way to do this. You know everything's lining up well when your first jump is your 
is your personal exploration chip because that shows that your cues were already and that you pit, put your guy in queue fast enough that his retrofit happened almost immediately. Something we really like. So let's just spend a little bit of time watching our friend work. We don't really need these for our in-system scans. So why is it that I put a technology, in spite of the fact we don't have that much money, between the two warp drives? Because the system is going to take a long time to explore, even with the second warp drive. Some of our ships will still be exploring this system when the second warp drive is made. Even in the case where I run a whole technology between them. Now, I could scout or do other things, but that's not necessarily superior, right? We have a research base. So this is the, this is the planet and it's the base. So let's look at, we got our first with two scientists. What are they doing? Neither of them are, well, this guy, is hyperdrive and troop research and this guy has no skills yet we're going to put this guy um we're paused because of this message which is perfectly fine uh we're going to put the untested guy on the the research station because i think the research station has something we would hopefully that he will well industrial research is uh, It's fine. It's fine. So we'll stumble across these because our exploration speed should be fast enough. We'll stumble across these anyway. The only one that's difficult to stumble across is the third one because it's quite far out. But I mean, you're going to find it anyway when you do the second one. Um, that's the closest to spoilers I'm going to do. So we're always going to take the, da the technological data. Stable work field and basic target tracking. Very good something I won't get for a while. So we want to make sure that we are actually taking advantage of the fact that we have gone to the trouble of, of surveying our own guy, using our own guy for surveying. Oh, I picked the rocky one. That's not the planet I wanted. I wanted it to actually do the cold one. Is there no cold one? Did I imagine there being, no. There's a rocky ice moon. No, that's going to be nothing. It's going to be nothing there. And again, we're just waiting. Everything will happen at its own pace. As our, um, as our exploration ships find their ways to planets, the game will begin to ask for more mining stations when the game asks for more mining stations the civilian economy will ask for more um, freighters which will give me money boosts which I will use to buy new things so on and so forth bringing in resources will help us to grow and we'll create a stable economy which will let us buy off pirates so that we can ignore having to combat for a very long time buying off pirates is basically essential one of the problems i actually have with the way the start of this game works and it's not a big problem don't get me wrong i do love this game but i think the pirates should be balanced closer to what a player just starting can fight with escorts they can make with one or two techs why because the way it's set up right now, the only solution to pirates is economy. There is no other solution, which means all players should be starting an economy game. The counter argument from my, in my opinion to that, is that economy is easy to develop, relatively speaking, if you have some understanding of what's going on in the game. 
your economy will grow fast enough for you to deal with the first two pirates you meet simply because of the natural things the game is going to show you to do. You find resources, you build stations, those stations grow your economy. More stuff comes in, those resources are used to make more stations, those stations grow your economy. Right? But it is easy to get into a position like the one we're in right now. We can't really build any stations. We don't have any money. But that's okay. Because there's no rush. Not at this point. There's no rush. There will be big, big money boosts that come when certain technologies come through. And when those money boosts come through will be the times we need to build things specifically in a more sort of rushed way. We haven't looked at our guy long enough, recently enough, which means he may be doing nothing. You still scanning that planet, man? This guy's out here. <laughs> this guy's out here building a base and you're still scanning. That's fine. I mean, it takes a while to get to level 15, right? We found our first fuel. Absolutely essential. We have a forest moon. <laughs> Makes me wonder whether or not we're going to end up getting some Ewoks. So let's just go up to times four speed for a bit. Usually around year 59 is when I'm pushing out to other systems. I think we're about to hit 15, so we're about to be finished here. Yep, of course we're gonna build the fuel base. We're starting to figure stuff out. So Swift Treasure is going to now immediately prioritize other ruins hopefully they'll get the other once the other ruins are done we'll i don't need to pause i have a bad happening a habit of pausing from playing fast on stellaris it's actually better in my opinion to leave it on two and pause very very rarely see our money has gone up because they've started they're starting to be mining bases and the fact they're starting to be mining bases means that they're starting to um need freighters, right? The more mining bases means more freighters. The more materials in means a stronger economy. It's just a nice gameplay cycle. Like, I actually really like it if you're, like, as just a way, just like a, a going through the motions of, of playing. I, I do like the parts of the game better when we are actually actively participating in that, though parts of the game where the game is all doing that stuff for us itself aren't as good although it does still feel nice to see the green bars pop up and it ask me if we're going to build stations on different places to me that feels like yeah that that's that's good to me right yeah it is a literal pipe dream the idea that we might ever be able to settle on this water planet unless we go deep down the colonization path. I mean, it could be the greatest water planet ever. Like 50%, right? That's like a natural 50% quality. I know this planet's better than that, but you know what I'm saying. And we would still not be able to settle it. Well, I mean, 50 is only normal, so it could be like a 70 and we wouldn't be able to settle it. It's weird that it picked that mining station to be the one to give me the mining station message, because I'm pretty sure we have other mining stations. Or maybe not. Or maybe not.
and the same as before we don't need to know the location we'll naturally explore we're going to be exploring probably faster than most of the uh the ais because they don't prioritize it in the way that i do alien schematic contents stable warp fields we're basically getting that technology for free at this point Did I, I never took control over the first kind. Yeah, so that it should have upgraded itself. It should have done that on its own. So let's just, let's just see. Look, as, as we're starting to see more ships leave our, our system and go and do their business in the world. These are pirates. These are the pirates from our um, from our story. Probably look away for about, I don't know, six or seven seconds if you don't want to be spoiled on what the best answer to this is. Because uh, in about three, two, one, I didn't, I didn't do it right. Yeah, you want to, you absolutely want these guys. It is absolutely essential to pick the, those two because in every other version, they're going to not like you. And in that version, the one I just did, which hopefully if you didn't want to watch, you looked away. Um, in the version I just did, clicking the two things I just did, they start off really, really close to one gift from switching over. So we'll just let, because of this extra five, when they zero out from this, Eventually this will zero them out. We'll actually be at plus five, which means one gift. We'll put them at 20 and we'll be able to do peace with them. Which is a very good starting benefit, I guess. It's it's not a benefit because having pirates... Ne I, it's a good benefit because they want you to be buying the information about stations and systems. About systems because that's a method they want you to go down. To fulfill your race's desire to learn things. Personally, I'm not so into that. <laughs> I like to explore. I don't like to know what stations are. For, where I said stations again. I don't like to know where systems are from being told. Because I just don't think it's as interesting. But we're... We're pretty stable. Which means it's a good time to go times four for a bit. We will times four out our um, our survey scanners. The great thing about survey scanners is they make the minefields good. Um, we want to do we want to do this is like fifty percent done already basically is a, almost is fairly the equivalent of having it be crashed because it will take half the time to research but then we'll crash it again which means it'll take a quarter of the time to research because we'll be able to easily pay for the crash i think and then we want research labs and then we want planetary exploration so that's our starting queue. Once all that's done, we'll have to look at our situation to see whether or not it's fine to just go forward or not. It should just be fine to move forward with the harder stuff. Colossal quake. What a bad event to happen this early. It's literally just... literally just damage to the planet damage to the planet that i can't repair 
until I get terraforming tech. What do you want? Good idea. And do you want a research base on hyperdrives? That's that's great. That's exactly what we hope for. So Swift Treasure is now done. We now want them to do the uh, one icy moon. Where is it? Uh, I'm losing my mind. There it is. You know, it says ice in its title, so we're going to treat it like there's a chance that it's going to be useful when we know for sure it's not. Awesome. Let's just crash this. Let's just go to here. Oh, we're already building this. We have quite a few research bases, which is good. That makes me very hopeful that we'll be able to do all the way to um, to the end of our queue, to our long queue, without having any difficulty. I'm going to have this nebula as being the bottom of my standard view, just so I can easily reorient to the way we're used to looking, so that the thing looks relatively consistent. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we should. Yes, you will. Everything's really looking good. Let's go over here and check out our pirate friends so doing okay yeah we're doing okay we basically want this here pretty sure this caps at 10. We want it to cap before we bribe them the first time. We don't want to cap before then. We don't want to bribe them before then. We don't want to give them money. We don't have to. Oh, my goodness. What a good starting system. This just a good starting system good starting system uh, let's look swift treasure you're just gonna go we're going to do this and this and then we're going to go to this and we're going to immediately upgrade it so that it has the resource scanner everything else is fine uh, the uh, the drive upgrades happen automatically at this point just by clicking the button which is good we also want to do see this turn automatic off turn automatic off and then delete it because escorts aren't real um, fabricator right there fabricator fabricator Upgrade it so it gets its new drive. Make sure everything's still stable. Like in its size and everything. We can give you back your proximity scanner because this drive is smaller. And that should be everything that needs an upgrade right now on my part. You are going to... retrofit right away and massive quake triggered at our home world it's this one quake has caused extreme damage has even damaged the quality of the planet itself blah geological features 
5% colony development, 6% industrial research, 6% scenery. Yeah. Let's look at this. So we're getting there. So we're going to get a few more points. The damage to our planet was not a thing we needed at this time. But we have enough extra money that that should be okay. Hopefully, hopefully it's not so bad. 5% damage. <sighs> it's not good at all. Oh, the in first independent colonies is us. That's almost always great. They're in colony range, easily in colony range too. That's just great. That should be super easy. We'll be friends with them forever. Hopefully nobody, hopefully nobody else notices that they exist for quite a long time. Because they, they just love us. That, that's us though. The people who love us are these guys. They just love us. Because of, we have all of our own techs, right? Um, what a nice start. We have a restricted trade agreement. They may immediately just let us move it up to limited. Um, there's nothing we want from them. Except to eventually colonize them. So the damage to our planet has destabilized our economy worse than anything else has. That does suck. Hopefully things get better pretty fast. It may change our um, our plan. Now that we're moving towards faster drives, we should increase the number of both kinds of ships we have. So we will take our numbers up to five of each. That should give us plenty of room to grow without pushing too hard on us. That's not what we wanted to do at all. We wanted to push persons. Push purchase. Oh, that sucks. That sucks so bad. Why did that have to happen? <laughs> what a time to, to have a failure. What a time to have a failure. When everything was going so smoothly, except our planet is trying to explode and... So we want to, we need to really get this pirate done. This is not going up anymore. This is as high as it's going to get. So now is when we do the first full large gift. And then we see if they'll do a non-aggression pact, which they will, which should save our economy. <laughs> because we are no longer paying them money. What is this? Do that. What is this? Do that. Didn't I say do that? I said do that, didn't I? Yeah. Do that. Awesome. So here we are. This is my personal ship. What's the most interesting thing for me to actually engage with? Actually, you know what? Before we make that decision, well, the game has decided to do uh, a nice uh, chug chug. We'll break for today. Uh, we've got our exploration ships, we got our second drive, we got our scanners so we can do the mining fields better. We're going to be zipping out of our station, our system really soon. Everything's going good. So I think we're in a good position. It sucks our planet was damaged. So we'll stop there for a second. No, for a second. We'll stop there for now. Come back to this later. I hope you enjoy it. Um, as I have said... This game is slow, and because it's slow, I just sort of want to do a take it easy feeling to this. This has been a pretty long first episode and a pretty long intro, but that's fine. I don't care about that, and I hope you guys don't either. The worst thing that can happen is nobody shows any interest, which is perfectly fine. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Our first trip to extrasolar systems.